Hello, I'm Jack. Welcome to Practical Programming Channel. In this video series, you will learn everything you need to get started with Web GPU graphics programming. In the last video, I explained how to build a simple 3D cube with lighting effect. In this video, I will show you how to add the lighting effect to a 3D sphere. Here, I will use the Git tool to clone the source code used in the last video. Here is a download link at the GitHub repository. From this link, you can download our source code used in the last video. Now open a command prompt window and run the following command git clone and paste this link. This will generate a WebGPU 18 folder on your local machine. This folder contains the source code used in the last video. Now we want to change the name of the WebGPU 18 folder to GPU 19. Rename GPU 19 and CD into it. At this point, we are going to start Visual Studio Code with the command code period. This is a Visual Studio Code interface. Okay, we can close this welcome page. Here contains our source code used in the last video. Now open a new terminal window and run npm install command to restore all the npm packages used in this project. Okay, finished. Now all the installed packages are stored in the node modules folder. As discussed previously, in order to add the lighting effect to a 3D object, we have to know the normal vectors at each vertex on the surface of that 3D object. Now let's add the normal vector data to the vertex data of our sphere. From SRC folder, open the vertex data.ts file. Now we need to add a new function called sphere data to this file. This is a new function, sphere data. Here we will use the spheric coordinate system to get the position on the sphere surface. Here we call sphere position function from the mass.func.ts file to get the position on the sphere surface. We then use the UV longitude and latitude methods to divide the sphere surface into the gray. You can see this U line and a V ring to form the surface grays. To obtain the vertex position data for our sphere, we only need to consider a single unit grid, which is a quadrilateral shape as shown here. We can divide this unit cell into two triangles. One is P0, P1, and P2. Another one is P2, P3, and P0. Here are the vertices for these two triangles. This is for the first triangle, we have three vertices. And for second triangle, we have another three vertices. So total, we have six vertices for this unit cell. For the normal vector of a sphere, they are simply equal to the vertex data normalized by the radius. You can see that for the first triangle, the normal vector equal to the normal data divided by radius. Similarly, for second triangle, we have a second triangle vertices normalized by the radius. Uh, you can see this sphere data function returns vertex data and uh, normal data here. Now we can save this file and uh, close it. Next, we will make some changes to the index.html file from DRST folder. Open this file. First, we need to change the 18 here to 19 because this is 19th video series. 
We also need to change the H1 title here from cube to sphere with lighting. In addition to the parameter here used for calculating the lighting model, we also need to add some input parameter for controlling sphere. These parameters include radius and the UV divisions. Now we can save this file. Next, we need to make some changes to the main.ts file. From the src folder, open this file. Uh, we need uh, to replace its content with a new code. Since most of the code for render pipeline and render pass have been already included in the light.ts file, so the main.ts file here becomes very simple. Here we first introduce the create shape with light from the light.ts file. Then we introduce the light input interface from cedars.ts file. Next we introduce the sphere data function from the vertex data.ts file. Next we create a new function called create shape. This function takes the light input and the sphere parameters as its input arguments. Then we call the sphere data function to get the vertex and the normal data. Then we call the create shape with light to create our sphere with light effect. Here we define the default parameters for the light and the sphere. And we call the create shape function to create a 3D sphere with the default lighting effect. This part of the code allows user to recreate the sphere with the different lighting effect by changing the input parameters. Now we have finished the modification to the main.ts file. So we can save this file. Up to now, we have finished all the programming. Now we can run the following command on terminal window to bound our TypeScript file in production mode. npm run prod. OK, the bound file is created successfully. Now we can click the go live link from the status bar area to open Chrome Canary to view our sphere. Here is a red sphere with lighting effect displayed on this page. We can make some changes to the input parameters and then click on the redraw button to recreate the sphere. For example, if we set the diffuse and the specular coefficient to zero, Zero, spec to zero, and then increase this MB coefficient to one. This means we only use MB light to our sphere. Click this redraw button. You can see that sphere looks flat and no 3D effect. Now let's add diffusion light and specular light back, and we change it to a small number, 0.2. And this is 2.8.4. And we can also change the object color from red to green. And also we can change the specular color from white to yellow. Then click the redraw body. You can see we get a green sphere with yellow specular light. You can see more clearly, we can increase the specular intensity to 8. So you can see more clearly, we have a yellow specular light. Of course, you can also change the UV division to 50, for example, 35. Then click Retro Party. You can see more fine grade here. Now we have completed this example. In next video, I will show you how to create a cylinder with lighting effect. 在这个视频系列中，所使用的大多数例子都取自于我最近出版的新书《Practical Web GPU Graphics》。
，从这个链接 Doctor Su dot net dot com， 你就可以查看有关这本书的详细内容。我已将所有的例子的源代码都储存在 GitHub 上了，这里是源代码的下载链接，在这里你就可以下载所有的源代码。另外，从这个链接，你还可以观看现场演示。也就是 Live Demo 这个链接呢，就给出所有例子的运行结果。今天的视频课程到这里就结束了，下次见。